This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today is the CEO of Leading Edge Materials, Mr. Philip Kozlowski. Philip, how are you today? Hi, Gerardo. Good afternoon. Doing very well, thanks. It's been a few weeks since we chatted. I think November the 20th was the last time you and I spoke, and your stock has nearly doubled in share price since then. With that being said, I still feel there's a pretty compelling opportunity given the assets. You had some news yesterday that I wanted to chat about. You signed a non-binding LOI to sell 100% of the Bergby Lithium project. Bergby is, of course, a, a, a project in the portfolio that Leading Edge had done some early stage work on and had drilled successfully, and apparently it caught the interest of, of several potential suitors. Yeah, it, it's well summarized, and I think it's important to stress that it's a non-binding LOI and it's subject to due diligence and a definite agreement. But yeah, Burby has always been one of these projects that we have in our portfolio. It's interesting. We haven't been able to focus and spend uh, the effort and the money on that, uh, considering our two main projects, the Voxna Graphite and the Nora Shari Rare Earth project. But we've been sitting on that and um, extending our exploration licenses. We have the, you know, done a lot of sampling. We had a good drilling program which identified high-grade lithium mineralizations. And we've been recently starting to look at what can we do uh, more to ex- explore that project to extend the discovery. Uh, at that point, we, you know, we were, there was a reach out to us from uh, Michael, the CEO of United Lithium Corporation. He had identified the lithium, uh, the Burby Lithium project, as uh, one of the most interesting ones to do exploration in, in Europe. Uh, and we started talking, and um, based on them being a dedicated uh, lithium explorer. Uh, having experience from Ontario, which might have saw similarities between the type of lithium deposit you find there and the Burby one, uh, being willing to commit to exploration work and uh, an exploration budget as part of the deal, uh, I think that was a, that was a good match, which for us gives us the opportunity to uh, completely focus in Sweden on our two main projects. Uh, receive some cash uh, more than that we spent on the project, uh, and on top of that, shares in United Lithium Corporation uh, combined with the uh, committed exploration budget and a net spent royalty that gave us a, an opportunity to hand that project over to good hands, uh, get some return on the investment and potentially uh, a, a good upside in the project as they explore the project further. So that uh, that made a lot of strategic sense to us, and I'm very pleased to see uh, to look after that going forward and finalizing that too. You mentioned that it is a non-binding LOI, but assuming that the transaction closes, you also mentioned that the sale will allow the company to focus on Waxna and Nora Shar. There's pending studies, I believe, on each of those projects. And I know that there is a lot of interest right now in quality graphite, um, quality rare earth projects, frankly, quality lithium projects. Can walk me through and provide some context, Philip, on how where Sweden is on its understanding of the critical metal supply chain and the raw materials opportunity that leading edge materials can help um, advance because it's a significant opportunity for shareholders of leading edge, but it's also a significant opportunity for Sweden if it does this correctly, right? Yeah, I think that's best frame and framed in a, in, in a very new initiative that came out of a, a Swedish governmental agency called Fossil Free Sweden. Uh, they had an announcement last week, uh, essentially presenting a strategy to the government for how Sweden can build out a sustainable battery value chain uh, within its borders. And part of that strategy was recommending the government to incentivize extraction of these innovation critical materials, as they call it in Sweden. Uh, so it's definitely an increasing awareness of the of the need and the urgency to solve sustainable sourcing of the raw materials for everything that is going on in Europe. And um, Sweden is becoming uh, more relevant in that context. And us with our two projects, you know, we're very much high on that uh, on that list. So seeing seeing more interest regionally in Europe uh, and, and definitely on a national level as well, where 
we've seen a huge interest in in our shares uh, lately in Sweden because we have a dual listing. Remember, Toronto Venture and Nasdaq Stockholm First North. So yeah, we've been trading more volume in Sweden uh, over the last two weeks than we've done in North America. So that's coming from a from a very low level, but we we see that we're expanding our shareholder base uh, in Sweden, uh, which is a very good thing because it's always good to have Swedish investors invested in Swedish projects, and those investors will become advocates of our projects, uh, both on a local and national level. So that that's very positive for us. Aligning interest is important as you advance the projects. How are the studies coming along? Uh, good. I mean, we're coming up to Christmas, and I think last time we spoke, uh, you know, we're still targeting uh, January, February for both of those studies. So, yeah, not much more new, very much into that. Uh, we're coming towards the end of that, but uh, to get them finalized, it will take some time. But still, end of January, beginning of February, that's the target. Excellent. Philip, great catching up as always. Anything else that you'd like to add? No, it's good. It took a long time before our last call and we're now having more free. <laughs> so let's hope that uh, for the next time as well. Absolutely. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Thanks, Gerardo. You take Bye. care. You as well. Bye now. Bye-bye.